hello, hello, and welcome to the last of my lists, uh, for the time being, because we've done the top 10 fantasy, we've done the top 10 classics, by far the two biggest genres that I've read. Litfic's also there, but I'm not going to make one for Litfic just because I think it's too... It's too spurious, it's too random, um, it, like comparing two in that genre just doesn't feel right to me. Or making a list, should I say. So the last one is top five science fiction novels. The reason there's only five is because I have not read as many science fiction books. Um, I'd say I've probably read, actually I can tell you full stats, Good uh, story graph will tell me very nicely. So I have read 185 fantasy books in terms of what story graph qualifies as that and I have read 115 classics. However, I've only read 50 science fiction books. So I think 50 is enough to be like top five, 10%. This is the top 10% of fan, uh, science fiction books I've read. I think that is a, a fairly pretty standard metric to use. So if you have enjoyed these, uh, these kind of top lists, uh, the only other one that I have particularly off the top of my head is uh, when I reach 500 books read, I'm going to do like a big top 50, uh, like books I've ever read. Hopefully you're interested in that. If you do enjoy these videos, please do like, please do subscribe. Uh, I very much enjoy doing them because a lot of these books throughout all of the lists are ones I haven't read for a while. And the things float out of your head, even though they're your favourites, they float out of your head. So having the chance to go back and talk about them for an extended period of time again, really helps reawaken why I loved them in the first place. Now, there's naturally overlap. Uh, three of these books on the science fiction list are classics as well, in my opinion. Um, and I think the other two are modern classics, so fuck it. Like, one of the books was on my top classics books of all, uh, like, list. So it is what it is. But to begin with, at number five, Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. Uh, a truly stunning book. Now, this has a very simple premise. It's that Charlie Gordon is a man with a very low IQ, um, and he works as a janitor, uh, and he kind of deals with people's interactions on a daily basis, etc. Uh, he does his job and that kind of thing. And he is offered the opportunity to take place in an experiment where he would be given medication that would increase his intelligence uh, and the book follows that he is told to write down his uh, like kind of diaries uh, kind of reports of how things are progressing what I think the reason this book is so high for me is uh, the plot is firstly compelling the character is um, effortlessly uh, endearing and lovable and it is a very sad book. This is referred to as one of those books that's guaranteed to make you cry. Uh, that's the one thing people will tell you. The thing I loved about it is that the book begins um, and it has spelling errors, it has uh, very simple language, um, no punctuation, no, no sense of any character to the writing. Um, so the cat is messing around again. Whenever I record, she's like, how about I just fuck around for a while? I built a cat tree for her the other day and she pulled one of the little dangling balls off and so she's playing with it around the room. But um, what I think elevates this book, as you see the character, as you see Charlie, uh, like he's explained to him what punctuation is and so he starts using it and he's using it completely wrong and all over the place and so you see him like get cre corrected and, and all of that but alongside that you also have the introduction of metaphors of of imagery of all of these literary techniques uh, these abstractions uh, things that his brain previously didn't comprehend that he didn't there was no understanding of what it was to use a metaphor to describe something by not describing it, etc., or using a different thing. Um, and and so as you have the kind of standard uh, level of writing improve, you also have this introduction of this voice. Like, because that's really what elevates writing that the, the the finding of an author's voice is that way of communication that way of using metaphors of imagery of of all of this description that helps 
bring the world to life, to bring what they're saying to life, to, to connect with someone's brain without needing to be just completely standard across the board, just explaining everything. And so we see a character develop those skills as the book goes along. And personally, for me, that's what takes it a t a, like a cut above the rest is that it just nails that premise. It nails that premise of a man who has low IQ becoming more and more intelligent and the, the benefits and also the um, deficits that come along with that because he's not just becoming mentally more intelligent there's also the issue of emotional intelligence uh experiential intelligence things you learn through experience and and the way that other people perceive him the way that he has been perceived his entire life the level of understanding he has and how it affects him emotionally all changes based on his ability to process information um and yes Fantastic book. I think it just nails it. Um, number four on my list, very different vibe, is This Is How We Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amala Motar. I'm sure everyone's heard of this now after uh, Biggest Dickus uh, or whatever it was on Twitter uh, caused it to explode to exponentially. But I've read this book twice now and there's a... I appear to still have the receipt from when I bought it. We are in a, a time war as the title would suggest, not the time war from Doctor Who. Uh, this is where a, a race of um, elf-like space creatures and uh, an army of robot AI type things uh, are, are waging a war across the universe uh, through time and space. And we're following two agents, red and blue. They're the best agents for either side and uh, they go through the time webs they go through different threads of time uh changing the past in order to make sure that their army in the future their side in the future has the tactical uh, advantage and uh as it goes along they begin to develop a rapport with each other and uh, it goes from there mainly this comes down to uh it has absolutely stunning writing the book split into two sections as it goes along like each chapter has two sections one is the description of that person arriving on the uh, the planet that they're at or the, the time frame, experiencing that time and then finding a letter at the end. And then it switches to the letter, which is from the other person being like, ha, lol, I was here first. Um, and the, the language is just so flowery, so beautiful. For me, I don't read visually. When I imagine, I don't, I don't read and imagine it visually. Um, so, when I just read these words, they're just so lyrically written, so beautifully written, that for me, that, that's enough. That is exactly what I want. Whereas, I do know quite a few people, my old housemate, his mum, who have read it, and they all had the opinion that they were very visual readers. And some of the description in this book is so abstract um, and so disconnected uh, that they had trouble visualising it and as a result they didn't connect quite so much in those moments. So I think there is a difference between what type of reader you are, whether you're visual, whether you're not, that will affect your enjoyment of this book. But I think for such a short little read, funny, beautiful, sad, action-packed, all of these things, fantastic sci-fi concept and just a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, Hitchhiker's Go to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, specifically the restaurant at the end of the universe. Restaurant at the end of the universe is so unbelievably funny. I loved it. Uh, I have read the first three out of these so far. First two are fantastic. Second's my favourite. Third took a step down for me. But the second one is just so bombastically weird. Uh, I, I don't even want to explain Hitchhikers because if you've heard of the term Hitchhikers Guide to the Galaxy, you're aware of the existence of the book. I would just say read them and just enjoy the journey. You're just following a group of characters doing nutty stuff in space. That's really it. Incredibly funny. Just effortlessly funny. Um, don't do it. 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 She's been jumping on the book cart and it's been really fucking with us. We don't want her jumping on the book cart. Uh, there's a part in this book where a man has, uh, is legally dead for a year for tax purposes. 
that is all I need to say. I think that's so stupidly funny, and uh, that made me laugh a lot in that book. So yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is fantastic. Next up, some would argue the mother of science fiction. Some people are wrong. Uh, they're the two options, and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Goated. Now, I'm not even going to get into the argument of whether it's like fucking the founding of science fiction, etc. I'm not going to explain what Frankenstein is because it's Frankenstein. You know, it was on my top cl uh, classics list as well, so I've done a more extended talk about it there. But um, specifically in terms of science fiction, having an author that's 18 years old, bearing in mind the time frame in which this is being written, being so clued in to cutting edge science at the time and using that to write this psychologically traumatized story interwoven with her experience as someone who lost her mother in childbirth the examination of frankenstein the character the layered nature of um an unreliable narrator through his story him telling a story through his own kind of twisted and selfish way and then also that being filtered through someone else telling the story who is also enamored by uh, Frankenstein is so interesting. I always recommend Frankenstein. I think it's such a such a wonderful uh, wonderful novel. Really that's all I have to say. I said a lot more in the other video I think but for me it's just a banger. And last but not least, my favourite science fiction book is a series of short stories. And I do have a video on this channel reviewing this book, this, this short story collection. Uh, I don't, have not watched it in years. I haven't watched it since I made it, actually. And uh, I remember it got absolutely no like views at the time. And I was like, oh, fuck. My Lordy Lord. I've not read a lot of sci-fi, so I can't speak for this in terms of being like, oh yes, uh, as a connoisseur of sci-fi, this is quite the spectacle. Because that's not me. Uh, I'm a little fantasy boy. The prose reads as if you're reading someone's, like, in a thesis for a science project or something. You have to do, like, a layman's version. It's jargon-filled. It's gonna use technical terms. But it does it in a way that doesn't feel like it's talking down to you or anything. This feels very personal and story driven, like character driven, um, which is the main thing I take away from this. This is a character driven sci-fi in short stories, which I found very impressive. Like the one complaint you always see about sci-fi is, well, it's a... Uh, it's, it's like the, the science is all cool and everything, but the, the characters aren't around enough. They're not interesting enough to kind of get you through it. It's all to do with the world building. Whereas this is like, the world building is really cool and everything, but it's the, the, the way you feel about the characters is what takes it up a notch. So I would say don't be scared of the, like don't be scared in terms of like I normally am with sci-fi, which is like, oh, this is gonna make me feel very stupid. I'm gonna feel bad about it because this isn't that type of book. This is doing uh, a lot for you just to sit back and enjoy the story. Overall, yeah, they're my top five. Absolute bangers. Is there any honorable mentions I'd like to say while I'm here? I did not put any Octavia e. Butler purely because I consider the ones I've read Kindred, Kindred to be fair, Kindred, Kindred probably should, I think that's probably like a very close sixth. But uh, the Pattern Master is more fantasy to me than sci-fi, so I didn't consider that. Yeah, I would say that there that, that that's probably Kindred is a very close sixth. If you want to throw Kindred on, fill three. So there we go. There's my top five science fiction books. We go pose for a nice thumbnail here. <laughs> I don't know what I just did. I I kind of stared at them for a second, but whoa. Uh, yes, that's it. If you did enjoy, please do like, please do subscribe, and as always, have a nice rest of your day.